What's up you guys, this is Devin from Central Effects Studios and we're back with another video. Today we're going to be talking about Panasonic's new full frame sensor rumors. <laughs> well, Panasonic is going to come out with it guys and uh, rumors pretty much are true. Um, as of September the 25th, Panasonic will be announcing their new full frame mirrorless camera. Obviously to compete with none other than Canon and Nikon. You'd be like, well, what about Sony? Well, technically, they're competing directly with Canon and Nikon. I don't think they're directly competing with Sony. And the reason they're not directly competing with Sony is because I don't think that they want to gun for the top dog. We'll talk about that later. All right, now, we're just going to be talking about the specs on what I think is going to have in it because this camera has gotten me more excited than the Canon camera and the Nikon camera that's full frame and mirrorless. All right, so the way I kind of mirrored my specs um i mirrored them off of the gh5 because they're they're advertising this in the rumors as a video beast and as they should if panasonic is going to compete on anything they need to compete on the fact that they're great video camera makers they shouldn't compete on pixel count they shouldn't compete on sensor size even though they are this time they should really focus on the fact that this is going to be a video mecca to kill nikon and canon so the reason i got the the way i got these specs i got them straight from the gh5 just upgraded them just a little bit you know why because panasonic does not really have to work very hard on their mirrorless cameras and video why because they already have mirrorless video cameras that shoot 4K and have nice flip out screens. Some of them have IBIS and all these other stuff. So all I'm gonna do is just boost up the GH5 specs and then, or keep some of them solid. Keep a lot of them solid as a matter of fact. And then talk about what they're gonna do about photography in this camera. All right, for the megapixel count, let's go with a 24.3 or 20.3 megapixel sensor the reason why i think panasonic is not going to change their megapixel count is because they've been successful with the 16 to 20 megapixel sensor and all their mirrorless cameras there's no reason for panasonic to try to jack up this to a 30 megapixel count there's no reason to jack this up to a 50 megapixel count there's there's no reason for all of that because they've been successful with their 18 16 and 20 megapixel cameras uh the gh series the gh one two three four five s s5 whatever it is and the g9 which is a balanced camera between photos and pictures um video and photos as well video and photos so a lot of the things that Panasonic is going to do here is just copy what they've had in their smaller sensors, just upgrade their processing power because they're going to need to truck a little bit more memory because it's a full frame camera. And then they're going to just try to maintain what they've had in the past. So like I said, 20.3 megapixels, 24.3 megapixels will be perfect for 4K. They're downscaling a 6K sensor and making it into 4K. I think they're going to keep their same uh, Venus uh, engine processor just amplify it a little bit more get a better version of it there's no reason for Canon uh, excuse me there's no reason for Panasonic to recreate anything really just amplify what they already have and make it useful for a full frame sensor 422 uh, I think they're gonna keep that uh, and um, have that externally coming out of the camera as well also internally where um, some cameras nowadays can't do 422 internally. They can only do 422 out, like Canon's new uh, EOS R. Um, downscale 6K to 4K. That's brilliant. Keep it. Since they did it in you know the GH5, they can do it in this new full frame camera. There's no reason not to if they really want to beat Nikon and Canon right here. They have, I would think, not 12 frames a second, but eight frames a second. Panasonic is not known for their photography and they probably won't be known for their photography for this go around. Why? Because they don't have a lot of lenses to choose from. Canon and Nikon are gonna kill at the photography side, but this move by Panasonic is saying, okay, we need to concentrate on our video and really drive home the point we've been driving home ever since the 5D Mark II came out and all those younger cameras when we made our Micro Four Thirds GH1. So they're going to have an 8 frames a second and not a 12 frames per second camera. Why? Because this will free up their video processing. As long as they don't have a camera that can do overtly too much and just focus on what makes them golden, which is video then they'll have a great camera. And also, they're going to continue with the two card slots where Canon and Nikon failed to, gave us, uh, failed to give us 
two card slots in their new camera. So there's a lot of good things that Panasonic can do right now. This is a video centric world right now. Even though photos are very, very important as well, video is almost just as important as photos, if not more important than photos. So having a good video camera kind of just played into Panasonic's hand over the last five, six years. I'm like, oh, video camera, we have that. We've been doing that for a while. We've been doing it great. And you can flip it out and do all this have all these usability features where then Canon came along is like oh we can flip out the screen and everything like that a little nickel and dime them for their features but we can give them that and then Nikon tried to stumble up to the road with bad autofocus and try to beat Canon and Panasonic and Sony and all these other camera companies that had more technology but they're still in the game uh, they had a lot of failed cameras but I think Panasonic will beat Nikon and Canon on the video side of their camera everything else i'm hoping that they will have decent picture quality as far as stills quality is concerned i hope they have a nice you know um, adapters you can put in there and stuff like that um, ports and stuff like that you can use um sync cables and stuff like that make it seem like they care about photography a little bit more now um and they can really have a contender for a nice, what I would say, $2,500 camera. If they want to stay in the realm, they might be able to make it even cheaper than what Nikon did. If they can manage a, you know, a $1,900 camera, having this switch to lens mount is the least of their concerns, I think. Having this switch from lens mount to lens mount is the least of their concerns because they can offer so much more in other places like ibis and that's internal in-body stabilization um and other things that benefit users who want to vlog and do stuff like that they can surpass canon because they've had you know all these you know histograms and all these other things that help you uh, meter your shot and video and they've been having this stuff for years all they have to do is just do a small little leap and get there now the mount thing might be a little bit of a leap for them because you know they were coming from micro four thirds that's a lot smaller than full frame whereas canon and icon and you know they were they were coming from APS-C no I know canon directly was coming from APS-C but um Nikon at least had the APS-C cameras and full frame cameras to go by so all they had to do was make it mirrorless whereas Panasonic had Micro Four Thirds mirrorless cameras. Now they have to make the sensor technology bigger. Probably have to multiply some factors to, you know, estimate how much speed it's going to take for them and power it's going to take for them to manifest uh, that full frame quality. Because going from a smaller sensor to a bigger sensor, it's a lot more memory that's going to have to be consumed. So that's my thoughts on the Panasonic full frame mirrorless guys. It's going to be a <laughs> this is this was a big surprise to me. I always thought Panasonic was more of the you know the humble. Okay, we'll give you the alternative uh, uh, to to Canon, even though it's good in a lot of ways. It's just not. It doesn't have like the dual pixel autofocus, but we're gonna try. Now it's like okay, we're part of the game. It's Panasonic, Sony, and Nikon and Canon. So it's four big dogs now. I think with this move that Panasonic is coming out with because. They've always been able to give us nice 4K cameras with video, and now since video is just as popular as photography, all right, guys, stay tuned for the next episode. I'm going to compare all these cameras, the Panasonic, the Sony, the Nikon, and the Canon full-frame mirrorless cameras, and we're probably going to have a fun time at Photokina.